We are planning a group trip, you guys. That's right, we want to travel with all of you, but we need your help. This is your last chance to help shape and plan the trip as to where we should go. So there's a survey below. There's no commitments. It's absolutely free and it's quick to fill out. It's in the description. Just click the link in the description. You'll fill out the survey and away we go. Off somewhere in the world. All right, ready for the video? Let's go. Last time on Delightful Travelers, we checked out the Lake District for the very first time. This place was breathtakingly beautiful and is a must visit location in England. In this video, we've made our way over to the historic city of York. We'll walk the city walls, eat delicious food, and even check out some Harry Potter sites. I'm Trevor, and this is Anna. In this series, we're exploring the UK. Make sure to hit subscribe and click the like button so you don't miss a single video. A huge thanks to our channel members and patrons for making these videos possible. Welcome to York. I'm on my way now. Welcome back to another video here in the beautiful UK. We're in a location today that we really wanted to visit for a very long time. Yeah, this is York, England. We have heard rumors that this might be one of the best cities in all of England, maybe all of the UK. So today we're gonna find out. One thing we do know already about this city is that it's absolutely chock full of history. There were battles here, there were murders here, the Romans were here, the Vikings were here, and it's actually surrounded by town walls, the longest town walls in all of England, which is where we are right now. You might be able to see the York Minster behind us here. We're hoping to take you guys to that later today. If you're excited about today's video, hit the like button because that's gonna help us out. Anna's back here excited about something else. She keeps finding little, little facts. Well, the walls that we're actually walking on right now date back to the 13th century, so relatively new, ha ha ha. But down below, I think that's actually remains of the original Roman walls that were like the first ones that were built here. They were here in 71 AD. It was when the Romans actually came here and started that's building these wild. walls. But I think that's, yeah, maybe part of the original walls down there. Isn't yeah, there's so much lower. I assume they were dug up over time. Yeah, so I think, I read a little bit about it. Maybe we'll talk about it a little bit more. I think when the Vikings came, they covered over the old Roman walls. So they've more uh, recently discovered where the old walls are. It's <laughs> I, so crazy. I just want to point out too, here's the funny part. Look at all the homes, just like right next to this place. It's like some ancient ruins. <laughs> As we're walking around the walls here, we're trying to figure out what other cities uh, that we've been to that have city walls. And the only one that first came to mind is Dubrovnik. Right away Dubrovnik, because I remember we actually got up on the walls and walked all the way, yeah. pretty much all the way around I the city. I think Rhodestown though, in Crete, may have as well. It but might, I don't know if we actually went up there. <laughs> I mean, we can look it up, but look at this, what we're looking at here. Yeah, how about this for a backdrop? It almost looks like they're having like a, a British tea party and some English tea down there. And then you have, the uh, amazing York Minster in the background. You want to go for some tea? You could do that. <laughs> sure. I mean, we're more coffee people. Yeah, but afternoon tea would be fun. It's actually something we've never done before, and I think it's a very, very popular thing to do here in the city, funny enough, but I don't know if we'll get to it today. We'll see. So for those of you that have been following along in our previous UK videos, you know that we're here in August. It's never usually our favorite time to come, like right in the very, very busy high season. We usually try to do shoulder or low season if we can, but you might know that we were just on a British Isles cruise, which was absolutely amazing. And then we got off in Glasgow, and we decided to have you know take a couple of weeks before flying back home to Canada to enjoy some of the UK. So just how it turns out, it's also just happens to be Saturday. So probably a few more people out than normal. Well, leave it to us to find one of the really busy walking streets. Again, if you guys didn't know, York is one of the most touristic cities in all of England, huh? For sure. And again, as we said before, we're here in August. Maybe we should be here in like January. <laughs> I think there's a reason, and you can probably see already why it's so touristy. It's absolutely beautiful and it's small. It's only like, I think the population is something like 200,000 people. So it's easily walkable and there's just so much to look at. We have come upon what is probably the most famous street here in New York. If you look up any pictures of this place, you're gonna come across this. It's called The Shambles. I think it's named after, well, you can sort of tell the way the street is. All the buildings kind of hang over and it's considered a mess. So that's why they called it The Shambles. I think it used to actually be a bunch of butchers here. Now it's just like a big touristy street. But here's a question for you. Does it remind you of anything? So in fact, this street was the inspiration for Diagon Alley from Harry Potter. That's what you might have thought of when you when you looked at it. So a lot of Harry Potter fans end up coming here. That's probably why, another reason that it's super busy uh -huh. here. I think there's a Harry Potter shop along here as well. Somewhere. This is by far the busiest street so far. It's like bumper what, to bumper, shoulder to shoulder. It's maybe the busiest street we've seen so far on this trip. All right, so that street is way too busy for us. We did hear if you come back at night, 
there's less people. Actually, our taxi driver told us that in general, York kind of clears out mid-evening around 7 or 8 o'clock. And we noticed that last night when we arrived. So, yeah, if you're coming here, just know there's going to be tons and tons of people. It takes a little while to get through, but hey, if you're a Harry Potter fan, it's worth it. Next up, we came to the York Roast Company, and this place is a very popular spot we decided to get some Yorkshire pudding. Now you might be wondering what that is. Very, very popular around this area. The Yorkshire pudding is actually the wrap. We got this in the form of a wrap. So what's inside you ask? Well, it's a roast turkey dinner basically. When Anna first told me about this, I was like, come on, how can a roast turkey dinner, we're from Canada, like a roast turkey dinner get any better? Well, it's if you wrap it in this. Look at this, you guys. It's like a giant wrap. I'm glad we split this, but it smells amazing and we're just gonna go right for it. Well, my first bite is really good, but I'll be honest, it's pretty dry. And I don't know if there's supposed to be gravy in this or maybe all the gravy's kind of down towards the bottom just because of the way I'm holding it. But you can see the turkey is nice and fresh. You got the carrots, you got the stuffing. The stuffing's really good. But I don't know if you recall, I think it was um, one of the Scotland videos, we had this uh, Yorkshire pudding. I'm never a huge fan of it, which is weird to say, like, if I have it on its own. I mean, I love bread, I love stuffing, and I love them combined together. But something about it is just a little bit dry for me, but I'm very curious to see what Anna's gonna, gonna think. Maybe she's gonna get to the best part, which might have gravy in it. Okay, I'm gonna give this a go and see if I have the same thoughts as Trevor. <laughs> Hopefully it was just me, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, so if there is any gravy in there, it's pretty sparse. I think this would honestly be way better if they gave you a separate little tub of gravy and you could dip it in. I feel like that would be absolute perfection. Maybe you can do that, and I just didn't know. Or maybe you can ask for extra, extra gravy and that's the key to it. But it is a little bit dry, especially with the, when you get a big chunk of turkey, I find it a little bit too dry. I do like the Yorkshire pudding better than Trevor does, and I definitely prefer it has this wrap more so than just sitting on the plate like it was in our roasted uh, Sunday dinner, I guess, what we had a few weeks ago. There are other options too as well. They had like ham, they had pork, they had roast beef. So basically whatever you want and you can get it in like the full dinner form also. But I kind of like it as this. I just would like it if it was a little bit wetter. Wetter? <laughs> Juicier. Like right Juicier. <laughs> we thought we'd take you guys over to our hotel. We are staying at the Moxie and this is one of those hotels that have a really cool downstairs kind of shared space. There's so much here. You can see even some arcade machines. We basically got some coffee here just to kind of give us some energy. It's an iced coffee. We need to get caffeinated before we get back out there. Now first we're gonna show you our room in a little while. We're gonna give you a room tour but we thought we'd bring up today like a lot of you guys always ask like you must, you must be rich. You travel all the time and that is not the case at all. You're not wealthy people. We just try to have little secrets and little tricks we do to keep us on the road. One is being we usually don't go to kind of expensive countries so that's why you haven't seen us in the UK a lot. We're often not in the USA. Even our home country in Canada. Now in this trip we're doing something a little different. We're basically not paying for any of the hotels we are staying at on this adventure and you might be like how are you doing that? Well we're trying the whole travel hacking point system. This hotel is a Marriott hotel and we signed up for a Marriott Bonvoy credit card which gave us quite a bit of points to use on our stay here. So when I first started researching hotels here in the UK and trying to figure out where we're gonna go and where we're gonna stay, I honestly got overwhelmed and like kind of terrified and actually thought, how are we going to be able to do this? We do have a couple of credit cards that give us some points uh, beforehand. This is a, more so I guess for Canadians because but some Americans might be able to get some of these credit cards. But we did have an Aeroplan visa that we continue to use all the time. It's great to have a visa because they, uh, they're they used in a lot of places. You can usually pay with a visa pretty much everywhere that takes credit cards. But now we have a couple of different Amex points, or Amex cards, Trevor was just talking about the Marriott Bonvoy we just got. So that gave us a whole bunch of free nights. And we also got a um, Amex Platinum. And I know if you look that up, you're gonna be like, oh my goodness, it's such an expensive card. It really, really is. I think it's about 700 or 800 USD, no, sorry, Canadian, per year. But we we only got it like maybe six months ago and we've definitely already paid for that in and of itself with the benefits. You get like a $200 travel credit so you can put that towards a hotel. You also get like all the, the lounges for free in the airports and we've already been Tons to a whole bunch. Tons of lounges. We even got things like Disney Plus. For free. With Disney Plus for a year for free, just stuff like that. It ended up. We probably got like 
$2,000 out of it already and we literally just got it. You can also get loads and loads of points with that and you can actually transfer that to things like your Marriott points or to Aeroplan. So we ended up like with I think 100,000 points within a few months with all the like extra bonuses and everything which you can use like literally transfer it over to Marriott and book a whole bunch of nights. We're, and again, we're not salesy or like we're not travel hackers, but I was kind of mind blown. It's like this is maybe what people have been talking about for years and we're finally getting into it a little bit. So long story short, we'll put some links down below in the description area. They're referral links if you guys want to click on them. We get a little bit of a kickback, but you guys get a sign up bonus as well. You're just always asking us if we have any tricks for traveling. This is one for sure. So enough about all this though. Let's take you up so we can show you our room. Well, welcome to our room. As you walk through the door, right on our left here you have the bathroom. It's a little small, but it does the trick. This is my office. It's, it's, I don't think it's meant to be a desk. When we came in, there was like coffee and stuff here, but it has a little ledge and there was a chair in the room. So I just kind of made shift to kind of an office. It looks a little weird, I get it, but it does the trick for me. As you come this way, you do have a very big TV, which is right in front of the bed here. This is a really comfortable bed, by the way. And I think they told us it was a queen room, but I feel like this is bigger than a queen size bed. Maybe I'm wrong. When you sleep in all sorts of different beds, I honestly start to get confused about what size the bed is. <laughs> but it seems pretty big to me. One of my favorite parts of this room is the view we can see over to like an old uh, pub right across from us, which I think is called the Black Swan. And then you can actually see you can, believe it or not, see the York Minster, like kind of behind those buildings right there. A little bit of a view. So we looked up the price of this hotel for tonight and it was something like 380 US dollars or 500 Canadian dollars for one single night. So that should show you just how much we're saving with all these points. We actually stayed at another one of these Moxie hotels in Glasgow, so we got more of those savings. So we're big fans, but anyway, Enough about all of that. We're gonna call it a day right now and then pick you up tomorrow. Well, it is the next day. We are right outside of the York Minster, so we've been seeing it from far away, but now we're seeing it up close. It's pretty phenomenal. It's also kind of a weird day. I guess a typical UK day, it was sunny earlier. Then we went and got some lunch and it was raining and now it's kind of sunny again. I know, do we even need this anymore? So we have this and these. <laughs> I, we don't know what to do. Sunglasses and an umbrella. <laughs> At the same time. This place is absolutely beautiful and it is massive in size. Now, of course, we have some facts for you. It is one of the largest cathedrals in the entire world. It took 250 years to build and it was constructed from 1230 to 1472. That's a long time. Those of you that watch us regularly probably know that I am a big book fan. So a question for all of you fellow book lovers. When you when we talk about like UK big cathedrals or English cathedrals, whether this massive, like just huge, like some of the biggest cathedrals in the world. Do some of you guys also think of Pillars of the Earth? It's a, a huge epic book. I think it was written quite a long time ago, but it's kind of set in the same era. And it's basically about the building of a huge church or a huge cathedral, I guess. So it kind of makes me think about it. Like you, you learn a little bit about all the effort that went into building these things back in, you know, a thousand years ago. It's so crazy to think about building something like this back in those days. So we actually booked a time to come in here today. I think it was about what, 16 pounds? It was 16 pounds a person, which honestly I think is quite a bit for a shirt or like going <laughs> cathedral. into cathedral. It's probably the most we've maybe ever paid to get inside one. Yeah, I think so, but uh, we're told it's going to be worth it. I think you can also climb to the top, but that ticket's even more expensive. We yeah. climbed to the top of a lot of cathedrals. Yeah, that was 22 pounds if you want <laughs> yeah. to go visit the church and climb for the tower. Well, we've done that a lot. That's what My I'm legs are kind of yeah. sore from the other day. So. <laughs> yeah. We've done that a lot in other videos, so <laughs> maybe it's worth it, but I mean, it's a tall cathedral, but I don't think it's that tall, but I think it's the inside is what it's all about. We have made it inside and I'm actually surprised how few people are in here. It doesn't feel crowded at all. It's probably because it's absolutely massive because they were limiting the number of people that were coming in. We had to wait a couple of minutes to enter and some people that didn't have tickets already had to wait even longer. So <laughs> you can come and buy a ticket, but maybe better to buy it online, but it's worth coming in. Wow, it's incredible. And something we didn't know here, you, they give us this little pamphlet, but you just said there's a crypt in here. There is a crypt in <laughs> down stairs somewhere. I think crypts are usually <laughs> underground, right? Yeah, I think, well, I don't know, that's a good question. Maybe they can answer. This has to be one of the largest cathedrals we have ever been inside of. The ceilings are incredibly high here. There are beautiful stained glass windows everywhere you look. And the thing is, it just feels so big and open. 
We have been in a lot of cathedrals throughout the world, including Notre Dame in Paris and Sag Sagrada Familia. Is that what Sagrada it's Familia. In Spain and like in tons through Italy, like some really, really, really amazing cathedrals and churches. But still, every time I come in one like this, I'm just, it doesn't get old. Like I just still <laughs> think it's so incredibly I beautiful. I think the thing is, is how did they build this? That's, that's <laughs> mind blowing, isn't it? In 12. 1230 to this 1230. Start? That's crazy. Like 1230 AD and they built this crazy structure. Mm -hmm. We're just coming through to where the uh, choir would be. You can kind of see all these benches here. They're also on this side as well. And I think behind me, yeah, that up there is the organ. It is massive. The camera does not do this justice. So behind me to the very, very east side of the building is the great east window in the pamphlet that you get with the little map on it when you come in it has some information about it it took 10 years to restore this window and it's actually the largest expanse of medieval stained glass in the country and it actually tells the story of creation to the apocalypse so we did end up finding the crypt and it was underground after all so we were right and if you guys left a comment below thanks you are right as well so it belongs to saint william the patron saint of York and one thing to note about that when you're down underground there is it's like really low seat ceilings it's the complete opposite of this and if you're a little claustrophobic just know that going in. From old churches to very hip craft beer bars we are now at a beer hall and this place is out of this world. We got a beer of course I'll try this in a second you guys probably know we love finding craft beer around the world when we're traveling but get this little fact about York there are 365 pubs around there in this city that's one for every day and this one's gonna do for us today we got a lager it's from uh, right here I believe in New York so I'll try really quick ah, it's nice and light refreshing I think it was only like 3.7% so I can have many of these also I have to talk about the weather for a second this is so strange you guys now the sun's out it's been raining we can't figure out what the heck is going on with this UK weather but I guess that's typical isn't it we did try to go to a place called the host of trembling madness and the reason being well there were a couple reasons one is that we put a show out on Instagram and asked you guys for like recommendations here in New York and so many of you guys recommended that place and told us we have to go there it seems to be like a craft beer bar but in a really old like pub setting so you kind of get the best of both worlds there are loads and loads of old pubs around here but it's Sunday today that was me I think we said yesterday was Sunday or yesterday was Saturday so of course today is Sunday and everywhere is just completely packed but we would have liked to show you even one of those old like 500 year old pubs. <laughs> This place is cool though. Right it now it's cool. it's where there's a giant patio over here, but no one's out because it's it was just raining. raining. <laughs> Speaking of old pubs and all the old places in this city, it's considered one of the most haunted cities in the world. So if you're into ghosts, this is the place you want to be. We just walking around in the evening, you can see all these ghost tours happening. And here's a fun fact for you: the International Ghost Research Foundation, yeah, that exists apparently, declared York the most haunted city in Europe. But then I was reading it's also one of the most haunted cities in all of the world. So not just Europe. There are over 500 ghosts in the city. Some of us barely counted them. So what I want to know is who went around counting all these ghosts and how did they manage to do that? <laughs> Honestly, let me know. I have no idea. But what's really fun about this city is if you're into ghost tours, you're going to kind of see tours around the city as you're just walking about, especially at night. So if that's your thing, you're going to love it. But if you're like us and don't believe in ghosts at all, well, it's still cool to see, but maybe you won't care at all. Well, the rain is back going to get a little bit wet finishing off this video uh, next up we're actually going to London and I'm sure some of you guys are going to be sad that we didn't get to like the Yorkshire Dales or the Moors National Park would have loved to but honestly we just haven't had nearly enough time we basically had like two weeks after we got off the cruise and we wanted to go to a bunch of places but of course being full-time travelers I'm sure we'll be back here many many times and get to get more stuff off the bucket list we can't do everything at once but we had an amazing time in York. Well, what a time here in uh, York. It is treating us with uh, some proper, or proper <laughs> UK weather. This has yeah, been a wild day. Yeah, I don't think we've had day. this since the Isle of Man, maybe? Uh, not quite like this. This <laughs> has been a beautiful day. We were sweating at one point at the beer garden, and here we are now uh, trying to make our way home and not get soaked, and have the camera get soaked. We're all pretty, uh, pretty wet at this point. We're gonna pull over here, and we're gonna wrap up the video, you guys. There's, this is not the last video in the series here in the UK. We no, have I think we'll have at least probably one more. One left. more video coming up from London. We're going to London. We've been there many, many times.
Can't everything. wait, can't wait to go back. Maybe do some food, we'll see, or we'll just be exploring maybe in different area of London. We will see. It's gonna be a lot of fun if you got this far. Thanks for watching. Trevor, Anna, you guys know the Spiel, Delightful Travelers. We can't wait to get to our very last location here in the UK. All right, guys, that's it. From York, wishing you Delightful Travels. See you soon.